Hi everyone, this is Migs from Sneaks and Ball PH and welcome to episode 14 of the Air Jordan Hunt. Today we have a quick look and review on the Air Jordan 14 in the glow. The Air Jordan 14 is a pretty interesting shoe because yes, Michael Jordan did play in the Air Jordan 14s, but he only played with these in three games. But even though he only did wear the Air Jordan 14s in three games, he did have one of the most iconic moments in NBA history, wearing the Air Jordan 14. Of course, I'm referring to the shot Michael Jordan hit over Brian Russell to give the Bulls their sixth NBA championship. If you've forgotten how that looked, we do have a picture here on the screen. But we also have my favorite detail here in this man cave. So this is my Michael Jordan last shot poster over there. But anyway, going back, so it definitely, definitely is one of the most iconic moments in NBA history. Of course, for that shot, he used the Air Jordan 14 last shots which is far and away the most popular colorway of the Air Jordan 14s. But for this video, we do have the Air Jordan 14 Indiglo, which is actually one of the original colors that released in 1998 to 1999. This is actually another thing that makes the Air Jordan 14 pretty unique because yes, Michael Jordan did play three games using the Air Jordan 14s in 1998. However, the Air Jordan 14s weren't released to the public until the 1998 to 1999 season, where Michael Jordan wasn't playing any longer. This is kind of what makes the Air Jordan 14 such an enigma, because yes, the last shot Air Jordan 14s are super duper popular and the resale on those are crazy expensive. But for all of the other Air Jordan 14s, they're pretty much just meh because of the limited time that he was actually able to play in these. But even though the Jordan 14 last shots are far and away the most popular colorway of the Air Jordan 14s, you do have other nice colorways such as the Candy Cane Air Jordan 14 and this one, the Indiglos. So with that out of the way, let's get into the review. So the reason why there isn't any unboxing for the shoe is because I just found these on the resale market and the buyer didn't have the box anymore but you know it was my chance to grab a pair of Air Jordan 14 so I pretty much just took it and ran. But as you can see it was pretty well maintained so even on the outsole it is pretty clean so I don't really mind that I wasn't able to buy it with a box because you know after all it's just a box. So just a few quick tech specs on the Air Jordan 14. For the traction, you have a pretty much all herringbone outsole. And this herringbone does seem similar to the Air Jordan 11, 12, and 13. However, it isn't in that sort of podded setup that those had. You have a few cutouts here on the outsole, and I think that's to provide a little bit more flexibility and reduce a little bit of weight. And then you also have a cutout here on the heel, and I think that's just to make the foam a little bit more comfy. Then here in the middle, you do have this midfoot support plate. It's pretty solidly built, and it goes up to the midsole here on the lateral side, as well as here on the medial side. Then where that midfoot plate ends, you have this sort of air vent and <laughs> that's pretty much just a gimmick because the Air Jordan 14 was inspired by a Ferrari so you know, that's why it has an air scoop. Then for the cushion on the Air Jordan 14, you do have a full length Phylon midsole and then you also have zoom air here on the heel as well as in the forefoot. The Phylon midsole is a lot thinner than what we saw both on the Air Jordan 12 and Air Jordan 13 which is why you have a pretty close to the ground feel. However, you still get good enough impact protection because of that zoom unit in the heel as well as that zoom unit in the forefoot. Trying these on, it was really comfy and it also gave me this really close to the ground zoomy feel that made it feel a lot more responsive than the previous shoes. Then for the materials, the main body of this colorway of the Air Jordan 14 is this nice tumbled leather. This black tumbled leather is nice and soft. It definitely isn't the softest, but it is plenty soft enough in my opinion. Then for the toe cap as well as the ankle collar, you do have black suede. And it does kind of feel like a premium suede because, you know, it does that cool thing that suede does where it changes its appearance depending on which way you comb it. So in that case, I appreciate the quality of the suede that they use on the sneaker. However, backing it is some neoprene and you also have that same neoprene on the inner lining. The neoprene here on the back half of the shoe is super puffy and super padded and it feels really comfy. Then lastly, you do have this rubber piece here at the back and this is made to resemble a tire because, you know, 
playing on the whole Ferrari theme. Then for fit and sizing, I did go through the size and it fit me perfectly. The Air Jordan 14 is slightly narrower than the Air Jordan 13 and Air Jordan 12. So if you have a wide foot, I'm not sure if you can get away with going through the size and I'd pretty much recommend that you go up half a size. The reason being that even though you do have a leather upper that's pretty soft as well as this suede, you have these foam teeth that come up on both the lateral and medial side. So I think that, you know, these really won't give too much. However, if you have a normal to narrow foot, I think you can go through the size because in my opinion, it fits really well. Then for the aesthetic details on the shoe, here at the bottom, you do have this green jump man. And then here in this black circle on the forefoot part of the outsole, you have a Roman numeral number 14. And then here on the midsole, you do have those black foam teeth. And then of course, you do have that air vent that I was talking to you about, which is inspired by the Ferrari. And then here at the toe on the base of the laces, you do have another green jump man. And then you also have another jump man here on the lateral side. And this is within this light green circle. This was also made to look like how the Ferrari emblem look so you know they pretty much took the theme and ran with it you also have another jump man here at the back as well as a number 23 then here on the top of the tongue you have jordan text and then here at the back you do have the roman numerals 14 then you also have a green jump man here on the insole and then for the laces you do have these really nice aglets so they have this really nice stainless metallic look to them and they also have jump mans on them i'm not sure if you've heard this before but they designed the shoe in a way that there are a total of 14 jump pants on both sneakers. So if you want, we can go over it, we can count. So you have one, then you have two, then three is in the insole. You have four here at the back. You have five here on the lateral side, then one on each aglet, so six and seven. Then you multiply that by two because you have two shoes. Then you have 14 jump pants with the Air Jordan 14. Now that's a pretty random thing, but I guess you can commend their attention to detail. And then for the overall aesthetics, I really like how the Air Jordan 14 looks. But you know, it is far from my favorite Air Jordan. And because this particular colorway has that pretty smooth midfoot panel, this is because I prefer the Air Jordan 14s with that sort of ribbed leather. But you know, the more that I've been looking at these, they've been really warming up to me. So I'm starting to appreciate this midfoot panel as well as those foam teeth. Then I also surprisingly like this colorway. I'm not really a fan of predominantly black shoes, but the Air Jordan 14 is an exception. I'm not sure if it's just because I'm used to the last shot Air Jordan 14s, but I think that the Air Jordan 14s really look better in a black colorway. Well, you know, except for the candy red Air Jordan 14s. Those are fire. But aside from that, I'd pretty much pick any black colorway of the Air Jordan 14s over any of the white ones. It does have a pretty sleek aesthetic and it's in fact, like in my opinion, one of the sleekest looking Air Jordans. And it really was made to look like the Ferrari of footwear and I think they executed that pretty well. Then if I were to wear these around, I don't think I could pull it off with pants because... I don't know, there's something about that whole sleek black look that I don't think would work well with pants. Or maybe that's just because a sleek black basketball shoe would kind of look like some dress shoes. But for me, this is just a lot more usable with shorts or if you're gonna use it on the basketball court. And lastly, I really appreciate the hits of green on this shoe because, you know, without them, there would be like a tremendous lack of pop of color. Then for the price, the Air Jordan 14 retails for 9,445 pesos or 190 US dollars. If you've been following along with the Jordan hunt, then you've kind of figured out already that this really is the price that most Jordans retail at. So are these worth it at that price point? Well, you do have the history of the Jordan 14. Then you also have pretty nice materials as well as pretty good tech in the shoe. Because like I said, it is a pretty low to the ground cushion. But it does have a lot of bounciness as well. I must admit that even though I do like how it looks, I know that a lot of people don't like to rock these casually. But you know, for on-court use, it is a pretty worth it shoe. However, if you want to get a pair of Jordan 14s, you really can't get one right now because there are currently no Jordan 14s on the retail market. So you're gonna have to find them on resale. This is exactly what I did because this is a pretty old shoe. So this released way back in 2016 and I found it on the Facebook marketplace. I was able to get mine from Sir Jim. So Sir Jim, thank you for this shoe because he also gave me a really good price for them. So I was able to get my pair of Air Jordan 14 Indiglos for 5,500 pesos or 110 US dollars. So I'm really happy with my purchase because for one, the Indiglo is an original colorway of the Air Jordan 14. 
And of course, you have that history of the Air Jordan 14 linked to that shot over there. However, the value of the Air Jordan 14s on the resale market kind of vary between colorways. So I was able to grab these for 5,500 pesos. However, if you are in the market for some last shot Jordan 14s, it's gonna cost you a lot more. The resale prices on those are anywhere north of 10,000 pesos. So you can kind of go like 13,000, 14,000. It just pretty much depends on how well maintained the shoes were. So there you have it guys. That was episode 14 of the Air Jordan Hunt featuring the Air Jordan 14 in the glow. Then with the conclusion of episode 14 of the Air Jordan Hunt, we are now moving away from the Chicago Bulls days of Michael Jordan. So you know, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls dynasty couldn't have lasted forever. So with the next few shoes, these are all, you know, post-retirement. And you know, those two shoes that he used with the Washington Wizards. So if you like the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Then if you have any comments, questions, or any suggestions for any future videos, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below as well. Then also, please sound off in the comment section down below which Air Jordan 14 colorway is your favorite, you know, uh, well, aside from the last shots because like, I know that that's everyone's favorite. So please comment your second favorite. Then if you haven't already yet, please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. It would help us out a lot. Here at Sneaks and Ball, PH.